Opinions expressed are those of the program host and guest and not WSTU. WSTU does not endorse any products mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. The Treasure Coast longest running local talk radio show is on the air. The Treasure Coast Forum brought to you by Shannon Square Rental Properties and Chapman and Plummer Law. Get interested, get educated, get involved and give us a call with your opinions at 220-9788. And here's your host of the Treasure Coast Forum. Welcome back to WSTU 1450, the Treasure Coast Forum. I'm your host, Cassidy Fowler, and today I'm joined here with... Solomon Scholl, Ethan May, and Kane Stringer. All right. All right, very good. Welcome one and all. So... uh, Today's show, we want to start off by talking about um, the program that we are all in so it's youth and government mm-hmm. and does anyone want to take it away by explaining? yeah so um in short youth and government is a statewide program that is run through the ymca but it is very civically um focused and teaches students not only how to engage civically in their communities but also to become um, better speakers um, better leaders within those communities um, and it serves roughly 2,500 students throughout the state And um, most importantly, it's youth run, youth led. So everything done is planned by the students and executed by the students. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit like the 4-H club. You get to see how the sausage is made. Oh, absolutely. Right? (laughs) No, um, you think a lot of the year round programs in youth and government actually send these students um, to Tallahassee Mm -hmm. or to places similar where they can um, meet representatives from the offices um, of our our state governments and um, local governments. This last um, year actually was the pilot year of a program called the Civic Fellows Program. And that was a week-long summer uh, program for students all around the state to meet in um, St. Petersburg and visit local offices, um, meet with um, mayors of certain uh, cities, as well as representatives from that municipal government. So that was really cool. Ethan, um, what do you think was the biggest takeaway from that? Um, I think the biggest takeaway was that I didn't realize how sort of bipartisan the civil or the local and state governments were in comparison to like the national governments. Like they were a lot more focused on just like issues that directly, um, affected their communities rather than like national policy. Right. That was a lot more secondary. Like, um, we had a panel with like three different representatives and one of them said that like, despite, um, some, um, other representatives being of like different parties, they were still friends. They did plenty of policy and only they, one of them said like, at least like only like 5% of policy was partisan that they went over. And Absolutely. Like, yeah. Like actually on the floor. It, it, it was, that was, yeah, it was really cool because they, they showed us how many of these things um, were necessary for our state and for our communities, but weren't talked about in the news because it's not in the catchy headline. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Yep. Important stuff. So, so, Maybe you can give us an example of some of the bills that have been brought before, some of the student-led bills that have been brought before the mock uh, uh, session. Well, personally, um, I'm in the legislative program. And Mm -hmm. so last year and the year prior, I made a bill talking about the arthropod-controlled spraying trucks. If You you know, the mosquito spraying trucks that go around Uh. every so often. So I was doing some research and learned that there's not too much research on the actual chemicals that are being sprayed in those trucks. It's almost like they really don't want to know. Yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> so as I was trying to dig in and do more research, I found on the CDC website that they are suspicious that the chemicals sprayed are actually carcinogenic. Yep, carcinogenic. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, I was doing more research and in our county, Martin County, um, these trucks spray starting at, I believe, 4 p.m., which is around the time that middle schoolers are getting off of the buses and walking home. So mm-hmm. you could be walking home from middle school and being sprayed every so often by these possibly dangerous chemicals. Mm-hmm. And over time it accumulates and the consequences could be wreaked later. So yeah. it'd be nice to prevent that from ever happening by um, putting a mandated time on when you can start spraying. So mm-hmm. that's what my bill was talked about. And it got, I believe, to second committee but there wasn't enough time to make it go to third committee yeah all right Mm -hmm. that's kind of an interesting thing so so rather than 
maybe another way to address it is not only on the time issue, but the location issue. So try mm -hmm. to try to do it in areas that are maybe not as populated during their earlier times, mm -hmm. you know, and then in moving into the populated areas, maybe at night where people are in their homes and in bed and that sort of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And also it impacts bee communities and yeah. such definitely that would hurt our agriculture. Yeah, the bee population has really been hammered lately. Yep. Yeah. So by moving that time, it would um, decrease the amount of exposure that the bees and pollinators are exposed to. And also, um, the chemicals go into our waters and actually get into our fish populations and bioaccumulate up the food hmm. chain. So mm -hmm. just the chemicals get more and more present within the fish. So it's right. just overall... Not a great thing, especially the timing, saying that it starts at least in our county right. by 4 o'clock. The problem is that there isn't a mandated time for every county that you, like, must start by and, like, um, must end by. So that's what I'm attempting to change, having, like, a mandatory time, one or two hours. I forgot exactly what it was since it's been a, about a year since I've right. looked at yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah. I think one or two hours after sunset, which obviously um, – the human population, a lot, a lot less people are out, loss, a lot less people are walking on the streets. Mm -hmm. Pollinator populations won't be out as much. And yeah, just re reduces exposure to the dangerous chemicals and also reduces traffic because those arthropod control spraying trucks can only go about 15 miles per hour. So, Right, because if they're going too fast, they're really not properly aerosolizing and getting that material out there. You know, so many particles per square meter or however, <clears throat> however it's measured. You mm -hmm. know? Yep. So that was my personal bill idea mm -hmm. for the past two years. Ethan, do you have, are you going to be bringing, you gonna be bringing yeah, I, it up again? Uh, I think I might, you know, it's been two years I've been working with that bill. I think I'm going to try to find something else yeah. to debate and discuss. All right. Find yep. another item you're passionate yep. about. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, a new really cool opportunity um, for Cassidy, like um, students in our program that have these passions are, when we meet with um, our representatives and senators in Tallahassee, sometimes opportunities arise. And one of the recent ones for this upcoming year, um, our local Senator Gail Harrell has offered to sponsor one of three bills we submit to her this year. Um, so in this upcoming school year, we're going to be working with the students in our at South Fork at Martin County at Jensen Beach um, and seeing if we can get the best of our bills and the most the students who are most passionate about them and um, present them to Mrs. Harrell. And that would be very cool to have her sponsor that in the actual yeah. legislation. Um, actually, the the seatbelt law um, in Florida was proposed by a delegate from our um, delegation, so mm -hmm. someone from South Fork. That was cool. Nice. Yeah, that's the, the a lot of thing. A lot of the voting public, a lot of the adults going about their workaday lives don't mm -hmm. realize that some of the not a lot, very few, <laughs> but some of the laws that are been enacted by our state legislature, some of them originated through youth and government. Yep. And that is a pretty neat claim to fame, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think most notably the the stop signs that come out from the school buses. That was a uh, student-led uh, uh, project, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's just a great, you think government is just a great program that um, really teaches students how to get involved within our yeah. government. And, and you see, and you actually see the fruits of, of your work. Yep. You know, like personally, I wouldn't have learned half the things that I've learned in youth and government within school. It's just a great opportunity that really educates the student in a unique way and mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. prepares them for public speaking and just being involved in our government. Right. So this is a national program. Mm -hmm. but it's uh, managed on a state-by-state -state basis, yep. right? And uh, and then there are local chapters. And uh, so Martin County uh, fields uh, the uh, South Fork is the, seems to be the, the big dog. Yep. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah the big We're dog. actually the largest delegation. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we are. Right. And of course, you are the bulldogs, too. Oh, so yeah. so it works out, you know, and uh, and then Martin County uh, High School and then uh, Jensen Beach High School. They're kind of getting their feet wet. But I, I think there's been some conversation about getting the middle schools more involved and in kind of creating the seed environment to, to bring up the youth and government uh, students uh Get in, the students to start thinking about youth and government even in their middle school years, right? Yep. Um, there are currently programs at Murray Middle, 
Stewart Middle, all the um, middle schools in Martin mm-hmm. County, actually, we have a program called JYIG, which is Junior Youth in Government. And it's basically like a smaller version of the high school version of right. Youth in Government. Right. And it just prepares these students in middle school to join Youth in Government. Right. Yeah, and it's a, it's a, <clears throat> it's a fairly recent thing because, like, when I was in middle school, we didn't have a, a JYIG chapter at um, my middle school. But now I'm, I'm one of the people teaching at that middle school teaching the kids at, at junior youth and government before they go to their junior assembly. Yeah. What a powerful tool that is, because if you had had a mentor from high school coming down to the middle school, oh, yeah. I mean, you'd be already a leg up on so many of the things that you're doing now, you'd be maybe even further along. Yeah. And so that's great that you're giving that leg up to the, your younger class classmen. Right. Mm-hmm. So that that's marvelous. Yeah. It's, it's so nice to, cause we got our first wave of um, junior youth and government students in high school last year, um, our freshmen at South Fork. And it was so cool to see them go to state assembly and already know like as much as a first year high schooler would. And that was just really cool. Um, Ethan, what do you think? Like I wasn't able, Ethan taught every week at um, Hidden Oaks middle last year. What do you think the um, most like different thing between the high school students and the middle school students is like like when i'm teaching them yeah what do you what do you notice about these middle school students um well i feel like i feel like they're a lot more inclined to listen because i'm a bit older than them (laughs) (laughs) um i mean well at least at the beginning of junior youth and government you could tell they weren't that interested because it was sort of a new thing they didn't really know what was going on with the whole. Yeah, with you the watch whole their eyes glaze over. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, but once you show them like really what's going on, how you can get involved in government, how you can um, express your ideas so freely, um, I think they really get into it. Like by the end of the year, everybody was getting up there and talking. They were all interested in what others had to say. They were all interested in in expressing what they had to say, and um, I think, I think at, at the by the end of the year, I think the younger junior youth and government delegates i think they're they're a lot more passionate about what uh what ideas they have because they they they're younger they have um they're more inclined to to share basically about Mm -hmm. what they what they want to talk about um when our students so we have a in high school year we have a state assembly um and so do the middle schoolers and when even though they were in their first year um, like most of our middle schoolers, we brought the most of any other delegation in the state. And also they did so well at the assembly. Um, I think several of them are going on a very selective trip called um, YCOR, um, su- Service in the Sunshine, which is a service, a week of service where students from all around the state travel on a bus and do service projects. And that's going on right now. Actually tonight, um, these delegates will be in oh i guess we're presenting this uh yeah. whenever but right. um <laughs> so these students will be in martin county tonight or today i'm pretty sure they're doing a service project down in um near jupiter area okay. um maybe with jonathan dickinson i'm not sure it's very secretive they say uh, okay. um even the students don't know where they're going they just they wake up and uh they're at a new place and they sleep at ymcas around the state mm-hmm. um so it's just i i remember going on that in my freshman year but it it was really cool to see so many of our middle school delegates get chosen and selected for that because it's 25 of like the 2,500 students in the state. So that's, mm-hmm. that was really Very cool. selective. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like cool. I remember our freshman year, I think Solomon was the only one from our delegation to even be picked, which, and that was still such an honor to us, yeah. but now it's being more normalized since our delegation is growing in power that more and more <laughs> yeah, right. of yeah, our we're upcoming. We're starting to pull the string. <laughs> oh Yeah. <laughs> Like currently, what last year we had how many presiding officers? Uh, we had four of the thirteen, and this year we have two of the twelve. So, yeah, it, pretty good numbers out of like the seventy-two um, de- chapters in the state. Mm-hmm. Our one chapter has a good percentage of those state leaders. Right. So that's right. So that's that's good because that means you get to help. You know, your vision of the process, you get to kind of form that vision um, and have a, you know, sizable say in how that comes to fruition. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then also, um, since our program isn't just a state program, it's a national program, 
um, some delegates are chosen to participate in a um, in a trip called Kona. Mm-hmm. If Solomon wants to explain it, because he went on that this year, it's um, called the con- it's Kona, the Conference on National Affairs, and um, basically it's it's a state assembly, but for the whole nation. And um, generally, I think around thirty five ish states send delegates. Um, I mean, some states have huge programs like Indiana and California. Their programs are massive. They have over 3,000 delegates and they have to hold three state assemblies. Wow. It's, it, I mean, like Florida, we have. I thought our state assembly was know, pretty big. Pretty, Goodness. We're like, we're like mid tier on the, um, the national level. So that's really cool to see. Mm. Um, but it's also nice because um, like I was talking to some kids from California and their state assemblies, since they have three of them, not everyone, like you don't get to meet everyone. Mm-hmm. One of the cool things about our state assembly is it's small enough for every delegate in their program area, like program area and level to meet everyone in that room mm-hmm. and actually get to know them. Like we have friends from all around the state. Right. Um, we have friends from Tampa. We have friends from um, Lakeland and uh, just like getting to see them is really cool. And, and you know that you really touched on something because that you're really talking about networking. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's how you really can move a bill or a measure forward for Is passage. Yep. Yeah, because, you know, they're okay, they know you, they like you, they understand your message, and they can get behind that message, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, but like, if they don't know you, you're just like, yeah, okay, it's white noise. They just, mm, they don't hear it. And that's yeah. just another yeah. really great skill that youth and government teaches you so early on right. that it is just so impactful for the future. Yeah, like even when I'm teaching junior youth and government, I tell them that that's one of the most important things you can do as such a young delegate is to network with other people. Mm-hmm. Because like when you're spending three years in, in ju- junior youth and government, sixth through eighth grade, by the time you get to youth and government, you're already going to know everybody yep. in the program. Because you've been spending all that time networking and making friends. Uh, and you and wouldn't go ahead, Frank. I was just going to suggest. And so from the, the junior youth in government program, they, they gets their creative juices thinking, okay, how can I get involved? What bills can I, what items are my, am I passionate about or mm-hmm. interested in? And how can I create a bill going forward? So you already have them thinking about that. So they don't just jump in the high school. Okay, now what do I do? Oh, yeah, they definitely. already have the the, the, the groundwork. You yeah, know? they're already they're already yeah. making bills yeah. in junior youth the government. So it's just like a practice run, basically, mm-hmm. for when mm-hmm. they get to the actual real deal. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't even find my like what I was actually passionate about, what topics I liked until like maybe last year, my junior year of high school. But like seeing these kids, like I remember Ethan and I in our freshman year, just like floundering over how to find a bill topic. Yeah, just like what looks good. Yeah, like what, what and you know, it it was, we got given it, we were given a topic that we didn't really care about that much and it just made it so much harder to debate. Um, but like as you move forward and as you start to figure it out, like when you do the research, you're not doing it just to pass a, a, a bill through a program, you're doing it because you care about the topic and you enjoy talking about right. it. And that's the thing about uh, doing debate, because there's a debate club, too. Mm -hmm. And the debate people, they have to be able to talk about both sides of an idea Mm -hmm. and be passionate both ways. Mm -hmm. That is a very rare skill. And that's that's something you really have to practice. Yeah, Yeah. like in the legislative program, they Mm -hmm. encourage you to speak both for and against the bill, because it's good to have like a balanced um, perspective. Yeah, Mm -hmm. because if. And, and really, when you are crafting a bill, you start thinking, instead of just thinking about, okay, I only want to talk about this because these are the good ideas, mm-hmm. um, by focusing on both sides of the bill already uh, as part of your thinking process, you uh, can craft a better bill. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, at our fall delegate convention, which is um, a statewide event in November, um, we do a lot of workshops um, for the different program areas, and one of the legislative ones is called bill deconstruction, and it really teaches you how to break down a bill into um, – uh, there are four categories, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I don't remember which ones exactly they are, but it's like – Debatability. No, I'm oh, talking no, no. like economic, oh, like safety, mm-hmm. environmental, um, and then like legal, I think. Um, but it, it teaches you how to look at a bill – Um, from those areas. Like I may not know everything about the environmental effects of any given bill, 
But if I hear a bill on the floor, my mind instantly goes to, okay, how does this affect the Florida economy? Who's going to be able to pay for this? How is this going to change the market? Um, so like you find your little niche that you, you can question all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really special. But what Cassidy was talking about too mm -hmm. is the criteria we rank bills on. Yep. So there are what five different or criteria? Four, 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 five at Kona. Five. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah. So there's um, debatability, feasibility, um, importance to the state of Florida, and preparedness of the author. Yep. So it's really important to grade our the bills and rank them by that system because it um, prevents a bill that is just boring and plain facts right. from being um, put into second committee. Because the entire point of youth and government is to debate ideas and especially not people. Right. So it just prevents a bill that would not spark much conversation from being passed further. Yeah, yeah. Like I think the one factor that a lot of people brush over when they're ranking bills is debatability because there's such like a well thought out bill and it's like, well, this is obvious that it's a, it's a good bill and um, that it should be passed, but that just makes for a boring, um, general assembly when you go to when you go to talk about it because there's not really much to talk about for mm -hmm. us older delegates one of the things we try really hard to like help um in our program is like getting everyone on the same page where they think um save the world initiatives are great but we came here like to really engage in debate so it's our right to speak in con against a bill mm -hmm. um and it's our right to vote against a bill because a lot of times students get um really lost in the idea like oh, I don't want to speak in con because it's rude. But one of the really cool things about youth and government is you can have super um, opposing ideas and you really just don't agree with a person at all. But at the end of the day, you can um, shake hands and go eat lunch together. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So that's yeah. really cool. Right. So I've heard about the 30-second elevator speech. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you heard one about the program at the very beginning. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so for each bill that you create, you have to come up with your own elevator speech, mm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you remember yours? I think I remember the first sentence of mine. mine. Okay. It went along the lines of, there's a common enemy across the state of Florida. There is a common enemy. It is the mosquito. <laughs> These pests. You know, it could also be the state bird, I think. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I never, I never thought of that one. Very good. Ethan, but yeah, so do that's... you happen to remember yours? Well, see... <laughs> <laughs> that's always a good way yeah, to start I, a sentence I, I never really scripted mine like I, I, I tried to get to the point where like I could just give the gist of it like at any point but the and downside to that so canned right yeah but the yeah. advantage of having a canned is you know you have all your bullet points in there yeah, yeah, yeah but right. now the downside is that I can't look at my phone and look at it because uh, like it, it wasn't scripted so I, I don't really remember <laughs> it as much now darn I, like we're, one of the really one of the terms we're, we're told to use is buzzwords. Mm -hmm. We're told to like work on our buzzwords. Um, so like I, being a, a presiding officer, um, I have to go to like all of the events throughout the year. So at a lot of those events, I have to give an elevator speech on what is youth in government. Um, and I've kind of accumulated like a list of these buzzwords, like 2,500 students across the state, youth run, youth led, um, civic engagement, um, you know, things like that. Right. And um, yeah, I call those bullet points, but mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, right. But it, like it, the program has taught me like mm -hmm. if I, if I know those, right. I right. know what's good to say, then I can just the in my head yeah, branch yeah. off of it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So well, that's pretty cool stuff. Very mm -hmm. cool stuff. So, so we don't know what we're going to be doing for this. Yeah. I'll keep you updated year. on that. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. All right. Any leanings, any thoughts, It'll be, will it be in the, the biology field? Possibly. Possibly. Because that seems to be where your passion yeah. is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Just got to do more research. I'll keep you updated. Okay. All right. And what about you? You got any thoughts? For like my plans for mm -hmm. this year? Um, well, I am in the, I was in the legislative program for the last um, three years, but mm -hmm. I was thinking of maybe working um, in the, with uh, my friend who's a presiding officer. Mm -hmm. He's uh, the CEO of CFO, CFO, yeah, sorry, of um, Chief Financial Officer, and I think I'm gonna be try to work with him in the DLA section. The so it's more for advocating for bills rather than all right. creating them. Okay, all right, we're gonna pick this up on the other side when we come back. So stick with us. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to WSTU 1450, the Treasure Coast Forum. My name is Solomon Scholl. I am the guest uh, this week <laughs> with Ethan May. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. No, no, no. Great effort. Yeah. Way to go. You deserve a clap for that. <laughs> so um, in our short little break, we realized that we missed out a couple key branches of youth and government. So we right, were- Right, because you guys hit all the uh, all the branches, right? No, actually we missed out. We missed right. out on some- Yeah, the program hits the Yeah, the program. Yeah. Yeah. So basically we were mainly just talking about the legislative section mm -hmm. of it, but there's also- Because that's, the, that's the one that gets all the buzz. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. It has by far the most delegates. It's, um, it's kind of the default. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so there's also two other sections, which is the judicial section and also the press section uh, what is it press exact, corp? the press corps is under reconstruction right now oh um but we are gonna so this uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um right now we have the legislative program area judicial and executive um and a few not last year but the year before and a couple years back we've had a press corps um which was really cool because it was like you, it was something you applied for. It was maybe five or six delegates across the state, um, but they spent their state assembly instead of um, debating bills or arguing cases or lobbying on bills. Um, they actually um, met with delegates and wrote stories about um, the things going on in the state that mm -hmm. um, say a delegate was very passionate about or something like that. Um, and uh, last year, because of resources and also reconstruction of the program, um, we didn't have press corps, but we're starting to introduce some aspects of it back into the program this year. Um, this reconstruction I'm talking about is um, some movements towards things that will make the program civically accurate. Um, so we have a lot of really cool plans coming in um, that we're working on because, uh, you know, we want even though we've done such a good job at like uniting the state and showing students how to debate and share ideas, we want to make sure that our program really is the best program in the state for um, uh, modeling how our state government uh, interacts. Mm -hmm. um, but as we were talking about the, I, man, I'm so bad yeah, at tangents. You, you went on, you went <laughs> off, but it's okay. Getting um, back to the different sections of youth and government, or yeah. do you want to talk about like executives since you're part of that? Okay. Yeah. So, um, the executive program is, um, it consists of the six of the presiding officers, which are the state leaders um, throughout the state. So that's um, the governor, the lieutenant governor, the chief of staff, the chief financial officer, commissioner of agriculture, and attorney general. So um, they work in exec, and under them they have um, DLAs, um, which will now be called LADs, because that's what they're called in the actual state government. Um, legislative affairs directors. Okay. Um, so they work with students in the legislative program um, to help them research and prepare their bills for state assembly. So they, they, they help them polish up their work. All good. Yeah. yeah. They, they are um, the closest we have to lobbyists, um, so to say. So they can give testimonials on the floor and tell students why this bill is really good. Um, and the judicial program, which is kind of it, it has a veil of mystery for everyone who's not in it. Um, we're yeah, starting to I grow. wish we had somebody here from the judicial program yeah. because we we're have pretty, two, we don't two have... legislative, one executive. Yeah. yeah, we had we had a student last year that was here for the press. That was Ooh. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That that's also in the youth and government. They actually have a, their own press corps. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. I thought because yeah. they can try to distill out what is going on and then create the news yep. regarding what youth and government is doing that's that's huge the messaging is a big part of politics mm -hmm. right absolutely. yeah oh, absolutely so i mean you know that is talk about an unsung hero mm -hmm. the, the the people that have the journalistic bent to them but they're interested in politics what a great opportunity it is for them to get involved with youth and government and do just that sort of work yep yeah i mean it's it's great for students um as you said who, who are interested in politics, but aren't um, on the debating side of it because they, they really get to look at the program from like a step back and see right. everything that's going on, all of the issues that we really care about mm -hmm. and um, report on them. They, there are the, sorry, brain fart. Um, <laughs> so we, we create these agendas um, and the press corps really takes a step back and like says, okay, so this year our presiding officers are really interested in, um, the water conservation, youth mental health, all of these things. And with their help, those presiding officers are able to like 
inform the rest of the state and hopefully see some really good bills on them. Mm -hmm. Very cool. All right. So we, so we had a legislative, we talked about uh, pretty extensively in the first block. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. So uh, judicial? Judicial, just going over cases. If yeah. So mm -hmm. from my understanding, um, from all of our under, it's pretty parallel. Like Yeah, we, we, yeah, we lack the knowledge. But judicial, what they do is the presiding officers of judicial, they have a, um, a chief justice and a Supreme Court justice. Um, they work together throughout the year to write various cases for the delegates to debate. Um, so... All right, so nothing actually comes to them for their decision making, right? Oh, they they do make the decisions as well uh, with their associate justices oh. at state assembly. Um, oh, cool! And <laughs> the the judicial delegates are given these cases and assigned to one side, and they have firms. Um, so you apply to have a firm of up to six people, um, and together you work to, um, on that side of the case to argue it. And the thing, which is, it blows my mind, but the the, preside, the judicial presiding officers write these cases so there are both sides that are viable. And these delegates, um, they use case law um, that has um, been previously established to argue their side. Um, so like the presiding officers, they research all of the case law that could be associated with these cases and get it on this big master plan. And then it's kind of like the judicial delegates, they don't know about it, but that's what they're looking for. They're looking for those cases to kind of argue their, their bills or the, not. <laughs> oops. Oh no. Yeah. Argue their, their, their case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so they come up with new cases every year. Yeah. Jeez. Um, and it, it's, it's kind of like, amazing in my opinion um this is an addition to their regular schoolwork. oh yeah, oh, yeah. 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 the government is a total different load of right. work yeah oh, especially right. for um, I mean, presiding can... officers solomon yeah. has I mean, yeah i pour like uh, as a presiding officer and this year i'm like taking a step up within the presiding officers because i'm going to be the governor um I, i've spent like Oops, that's the third time I've done that. I spend like <laughs> twenty plus hours a week yeah. trying to organize because, like, I the presiding yeah, it's probably officers, not enough time. No, I yeah. mean we we do everything we can. Like we um we have supporting officers throughout the state. Mm -hmm. Um, like Ethan was a, a committee chair last year. Um, so the presiding officers they orchestrate all of that. We have conference calls every week to prepare these um, supporting officers for their duties at state assembly. So it's it's a whole. It, we, it, it's called like the magic show because a normal delegate sees this bright, shiny program um, and is able to interact in the state capitol and do all of these really cool programmatic things. Um, but behind the magic show is so many layers of other students working to make that happen for them. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean. Support staff. It's, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's very cool. Very cool yeah, indeed. It, it is pretty fun though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Those leadership positions. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Ethan, what, what was your favorite part about being a committee chair last committee year? Committee chair? Um, well, it was kind of a different experience because, like, w the committee chair that I did, it was for Williams, which is um, – there's, like, different levels. So the younger kids have a, a different um, Senate and House of Representatives than the older kids. So Williams is, like, the highest you can get. So there's a lot of seniors. So it felt a lot more relaxed of a, of a committee than, like, maybe, say – um, if I was doing it as a uh, Bowen is the, is the lowest, like as if I was doing a Bowen committee, that would be a lot more um, normal. But like some of the some of the kids in the in the committee uh, that I was chairing, they um, some of them were also committee had also been committee chairs. So I think yeah. it was a lot of fun. A lot less like having to remind students of um, procedure. Like yeah, it was it was yeah. a lot smoother mm -hmm. of an experience. So I think that was pretty fun. Right. And and again, the students now coming into the system through the uh, middle school. Oh yeah, oh, it's going to be even yeah. even yeah. easier for them. Yeah, like seven years of experience once they get to senior year. Oh, it's, it's six seven oh, years. That's nuts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, shoot, they can, <laughs> they can run for office right out of high oh, school. Oh yeah, this yeah. Is, I mean, it's great preparation. Yeah, yeah like it, it was really cool because um, like running to be a presiding officer, you you have to campaign, except for the judicial side. Um, and we have so many students who were freshmen um, last year, but were in JIG um, that are like hands on, ready to run in their sophomore year. So that's really cool. Excellent. Excellent. OK, well, this is marvelous. We'll uh, be right back. So stick with us. We'll be right back.
and welcome back to WSTU 1450, the Treasure Coast Forum. All Way right. to go, Ethan. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Excellent. So during our break, we thought of something that's really important that really just signifies the importance of youth in government. And that is the idea that in youth in government, we attempt to debate ideas, not people. Absolutely. Try to look at situations from a bipartisan perspective. Mm -hmm. The The whole thing about being able to shake hands with the person you debated against afterwards is like really resonates throughout our program. Like instead of, instead of being passionate, I mean, being passionate is good when you're researching and knowing everything because you care about it, but being passionate in, in a, in an uninformed way is never useful. Um, so we've, we've, yeah. we've really learned to, um, you know, debate your opinion, but always have that on fact. Like if, um, you know, we're not, um, it, we don't really, like, you can't be on your phone during chambers, but um, a lot of people, like, who are really passionate about debate will know, like, there are exceptions if you are, like, if you have a debate and you have an idea and you're like, oh, let me go, let me go find the statistic for that. Oh, let me, let me find this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember um, there was somebody who did a bill on, like, uh, birth control for all women. Oh, yeah. There, in youth and government, there's some pretty radical. Yeah, there's, yeah. It, oh, there's yeah. a lot of radical stuff that but, goes on. But um, I an remember, equal amount of, like, actually precisely planned things, too. Yeah. yeah. And throughout all of it, the thing that stays the same is um, you're exposed to it and therefore you get to inform yourself. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. All right. So we've got about uh, eight minutes left. What just to like keep going on that yes. a little bit. Yes, um, sure. I think that it's just the idea that we look at problems from a bipartisan perspective and mm -hmm. seeing both sides of the actual issue mm -hmm. is really important and something that adults and politicians can take away from the program. And mm -hmm. that it's just a great thing that these kids are learning at such a young age that right. it will bring change. To our future government, hopefully. So not, not so not necessarily just beating up the other your opponent mm -hmm. and, and which is what and bludgeoning them currently. right yeah. with an idea. You want to say how do we both put our arms around this idea and take some of your ideas and take some of my ideas. Let's see if we can put it together. That's what they refer to. And that's to actually that. a thing that you can do in the legislative program when yeah. you can combine bill ideas or and also um, amend. edit amend yeah yep. amend the, well, we there's a lot of uh, promotion for amending mm -hmm. um, because like one of my favorite things to, to hear or to do myself is like, while I disagree with it now, it could be amended to change it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you can write an amendment to you explain your opinion. You're like, well, this bill is really great. I, I enjoy the purpose, but this little facet of it will harm blah, blah, blah. So right. here's a way to solve that. Right. Um, and so it's, it's totally, you, there's so much encouragement for collaboration um, and that's really like, not only do we share ideas, but we, we come to compromises and we find the real solution. Yeah. That, that's very important stuff to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. That's pretty much youth and government for you. <laughs> okay. And, um, well, we do a lot of, uh, mirroring of the, the actual, um, governments like, uh, focuses. Mm -hmm. Um, so, the, the presiding officers write executive and legislative agendas mm -hmm. that they share with the rest of the program to show um, these are some topics that we're really interested in. And if you write um, bills on them, we will sponsor you and um, have our uh, legislative affairs directors work with you throughout the year. Um, and we get to like talk with, uh, there are two events throughout the year, uh, Youth Advocacy Days and PO Initiative Development, where we go to the Capitol outside of state assembly and talk to representatives and um, representatives of uh, offices mm -hmm. um, and get to learn those policies. Like we, while we dislike some of the, the like views right now in our, in our government, we, we do like to stay um, civically accurate and kind of say, Oh, these are really important topics. We can agree on that. Mm -hmm. And we follow those topics equally and try to, show our side to them mm -hmm. which is really cool yeah i think i think it's really good that like um using government gives you the opportunity to like rather than just like maybe writing a letter to a congressman maybe they write back and then maybe you have a meeting with them and all this stuff it's sort of like sort of a fast track kind of thing to get your ideas out there if you're really passionate about an idea and you think it sounds good then you can get it straight through and you could even have um 
Psalm and the other presiding officers talk about it, like maybe uh, youth adv- one of those youth adv- advocacy trips mm-hmm. um, to the Capitol. So I think I think it's a really cool thing. I mean, on our local level too, like we oh, yeah. are, are uh, not all of the delegations are um, like this, but one of the things that our Treasure Coast excels at is um, meeting with local office. Like we visit our school board all the time to not only present on the on the program, but also um, kind of just talk about the things we're interested in as students. Um, and thanks to the program, like uh, I know our um, county wants to get rid of a math class that Ethan and I are in because oh, it, yeah. it, only, it only has eight kids per year because it's like the highest math class, but it's really important to us. But the, the county wants to get rid of it because it serves so, so few students. Um, but because of youth and government, I know how to approach these people. And also, I mean, I've talked to them at so many events that they, they know who I am. It's the networking, networking we talk yep. about, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so your ideas, your thoughts have political capital. Yeah, exactly. Right. And you can leverage that capital because they look at you and they go, OK, this individual may actually know what he's talking about. So therefore, we should listen and w- his opinions have value mm-hmm. and we should at least acknowledge that and uh, perhaps adopt some of these suggestions and ideas. So oh it's, it's yeah. yeah, rather than just being uh, rejected out of hand because, yeah. well, what do you know? Yeah, right. I mean, even it's at the state level, um, in the, the committees where they hear bills um, and the public is invited to join and watch and um, give testimony, like, I've, I've gone in there at some of, like, the youth advocacy days. I sat in on um, an education committee and like I witnessed screaming matches and I'm like, well, this doesn't solve anything. Also, none of these representatives care because this person is just screaming at them. Mm-hmm. Um, but like our program teaches you how to go up to them and be like, OK, here, here is what needs to be focused on. This bill fails to do that. Yeah. And the voice of the youth and government program actually is what got us the, the allocated funds for the Civic Fellows program. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That, um, that just happened la- uh, in June. Solomon right. and I went to the we went. We met yeah, with describe that. the Civics Fellows Program. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it, so it was a week-long program, and it was at USF St. Pete. Um, and it was like maybe 80 students from youth and government. It was the pilot year. We were shooting for 75, so we broke that, which made us really happy. This next year, it'll be open to 150. Um, wow. Yeah. Almost double. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. That's, that's like a fifth of our program. So that's that's a huge amount. Yeah, of everything kids. in YIG is growing so fast right now. Uh, mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. Um but so we, we stayed in dorms at USF St. Pete and we went to lectures from um, professors at the, the college as well as um, panels by uh, actual representatives. Yeah, we lobbyists. probably met with like maybe 10 Florida representatives yeah, it wow. was at very, that trip. It was, I mean, it, it not only did it teach us about the government, but it, oh, it really like opened up our mind because I, I, I was kind of shunned away from politics as an individual because of how partisan I saw it. But seeing these people talk and just say, you know, the national level, then the news blows it up. Even in the state level, the news blows it up. But really, like, we're just trying to make sure that kids can walk to school safely or Mm -hmm. all of these things that everyone can agree on, you know. I mean, and the lower, the the more local you get, um, the more bipartisan those issues get. So it showed us. um, We even talked with a panel of lobbyists and they're like, I would never... Um, advocate for a, a piece of legislation that I'm morally against. Yeah. No, so you, you it gives saw, you a really good inside look on you saw how much on. people were able to, because you hear about like um, individuals like lobbying, like, oh, I know my parents are always going on about like big pharma, big sure, you know, ah, but at the same time, like, you know, no one's being forced to do these things. Yeah. You can, you can really stick to your moral compass. So well, that's good. That's good that you have, uh, and uh, you can use that as a, a tool uh, for uh, for teaching others too. Oh, you yeah. know, I mean, <clears throat> because I think just by by debating certain ideas or having a a business like conversation about ideas, concepts, and uh, and these sort of things, um, it it teaches uh, our or contemporaries, uh, another way to behave rather than the shouting matches that yep. we see. And, you know, and, and it, I wish the, <clears throat> there was probably a, a, a youth in government program. Some of the schools uh, in college uh, that the students, they get up to uh, speakers, they give a, ch- you know, a chance to lecture 
and uh, guest speakers that come there, and then these students that come before the microphone. And now all they do is just try to, they, they, have, they have their phone in front of them, and they're saying, on this date, you said this and such. I don't agree with this, you know? And they're just shouting them down and that sort of, they're not really engaging in a real conversation, yeah. you know? I mean, it's, it's, it's a completely different playing field if you're trying to, like, you can attack and be negative or you can work together. Right. Yeah. At the end of the day, like debate ideas, not people. There mm -hmm. you go. Well said. Okay. Well, very good. We had yeah. a very successful show. And uh, we invite you to join us next time right here on Treasure Coast Forum. Thank you for listening.